Our fight to eradicate corruption, maladministration, unethical leaders, and the abuse of taxpayers' money by those in power continues. It's fresh, it's fearless, and focused. The Outer Hour, where your voice matters. Hello and welcome to the Outer Hour. We're live. We've got krach. We've got power. To you, how's your power tonight? How are you feeling? It's good to be back with you after a week or two of uh, being affected like everyone else in this country by Eskom's load shedding schedules. But here we are and uh, looking forward to the discussion tonight. Also looking forward to your uh, discussion in the comment section down below. Samantha Van Espen uh, is moderating in the YouTube feed and Masejo Mutsuneng will be looking after you in the Facebook feed. We'll see who's first on board or who our chief whip is tonight in just a moment. And it would be nice to reconnect with you after a bit of time away. So say hello. Uh, say how's it to each other, say hello to Sam if you're in YouTube, say hello to Masejo if you are in Facebook. Masejo also produced the show tonight, so thank you to her for that. On the show this evening, we've got Rudy Heineke, Portfolio Manager in charge of State Capture at Outer. We'll be talking about the latest NPA arrests today and also the promised arrests by the 30th of September. What's happening with that? Uh, we will also have the CEO join us in a few minutes. Wayne Duvenage will join us on the Outer Hour, ready to take your questions for the full hour, as well as everybody's favorite advocate. Advocate Stefani Fick will join us this evening. Let's take a look and see who's on board and who our Chief Whip is tonight. It's Madeline Gooch. Hey, Chief Whip. Bah, that's you, Madeline. You've beat Claire Feldman, who is normally on first. Let's see who else we've got. So Madeline says, good to be back with you, Altarians. Thank you. It's nice to be back with you too, Madeline. Uh, Claire Feldman comes in, squeaks in in second. Hello, Claire. Nice to see you on the screen. We'll do a couple of hellos this evening and just say how's it to each other in true South African style. Glennis Truby is on board. Jeff P. Scott is on board. Hello, Jeff. Nice to see your name there again. And uh, remember to like and share this to get it out to your friends and more and more South Africans. Rudy Heineke will be on your screen, but also ready to engage with you in the comment section down below the video. So say hello to Rudy. He's in the Facebook page. Christo Fenter, it's been a while. Hello, Christo. Evening, everybody. Nice to see you there, Christo. Caesar Tonkin says, hello, Outer. Hello, Caesar. And uh, Michael John Billsbury out of the Eastern Cape. Welcome back. Sanity prevails, says Michael. Nice to see you there. Uh, Samantha Van Nispen is also commenting in the Facebook section. So glad to be back and engaging with all of you. That's lovely. Uh, who else have we got? We got Craig Blichnote. Evening all. Hey, Tom. How's it, Craig? And Hilda Mayer is on board. Di Gibson is on board. Uh, Stefani Fick will be on your screen, but also ready to engage with you in the comment section. She's on board in YouTube. We've got uh, Denise Jacob, who's on board. And Brian Blyde says, welcome back, Arthur. Welcome back to you as well, Brian. And we'll pop more of the hellos on screen as uh, we go along. Please remember to like and share this program so we can get it out to more and more South Africans. So let's say hello to, who should we say? Ilza Salzviertel there. Hello, Ilza. Nice to see you on board tonight. Good to have you with us. And Terry van der Valt from KZN. Hello, guys. How's it, Terry? Good to have you on board as well. Get involved in the discussion. Let's have a fat chat tonight. Okay, Rudy Heineke is sitting in his home office slash studio, ready to say how's it to you. So why don't we say hello to the portfolio manager at Outer, who knows more about the details uh, when it comes to state capture, I guess, than anybody else in the country. Hello, Rudy. Hello, Tom, and good, every, uh, good evening, everybody. It's nice to be back on uh, Outer Hour after a, a short uh, load shedding delay, but uh, nice to be back and uh, looking forward to the discussion tonight. So are we, and it's good to see you on screen tonight, Rudy. And uh, Stefani Fick, Advocate Stefani Fick, how are you, ma'am? Good evening. How's it, everybody? Good evening to you. Yeah, it's lucky to, to be back. Um, um, after hour is always nice, and I think a lot of people missed it. So, yeah, let's start this conversation. I feel a bit like a third wheel. I mean, Rudy's really? the one that's... 
if he doesn't know anything, if, if he doesn't know about it, then it doesn't exist in state capture. But yeah, yeah, but you know the law. You know the you know how the wheels of justice <laughs> grind, and that's that's what you've got on your side. You got that legal experience. <laughs> Di Gibson says We're someone's had so Di Gibson says someone's had a haircut, yeah, for a couple of weeks now, Di, and uh, looking brand new. I hope. Okay, uh, Wayne will join us in about five minutes from now. Uh, we'll say hello to the CEO of Auto, but in the meantime, let's start chatting about the promised NPA arrests by the thirtieth of September. Uh, perhaps we can ask start with the the good advocates and ask Stefani what the NPA actually promised. Well, I think they they sort of alluded to the fact that they, you know, we're going to see some big arrests <clears throat> and some big prosecutions, you know, the, the bigger names. Now, what we see saw today is one of the, the, the bigger names. Um, and, and, and it's a good thing. I think we must just remember, and, 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 and this is not making excuses for the, for the, for the NPA, is that due to um, state capture and, uh, and uh, like so many other SOEs, NPA was not spared. And I think, um, you know, state capture really um, did a number on, 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 on the NPA. So except for the fact that we are so far behind on, on state capture prosecutions and even investigations, um, you know, each and every day there's crime happening. We, you know, you hear about still hijackings, house mm. robberies, vehicle theft, house breakings. That doesn't stop. Um, assaults, that doesn't stop. Um, and, 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 and then they need to uh, play this, this catch up game. And then secondly, what is important is remember that the NPA can only prosecute what the SAPS gives them. Um, so, you know, the hawks and all of that. And unfortunately, we, we all know, and we can discuss that for, 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 for weeks on end, um, is the capability of the South African Police Service to, to, to combat crime and to investigate crime. And the NPA can't do anything unless you have a, 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 you know, a good investigations team. Now, I'm not making excuses for them. We should have seen some people in orange overalls, never mind being arrested and starting a prosecution. But that being said, um, I think we're starting to see um, a movement in, 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 in the direction that, you know, we've seen some arrests, but now we're starting to see the, 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 the bigger names um, mm. being, being arrested. And, and whether they will fulfill the, you know, the promise of all these arrests, I think slowly but surely we, we will be, you know, we're getting there. Be getting there. If you've got a question for Stefani Feck or Rudy Haneke, pop it in the comment section down below this video. I see Claire Feldman has already got the first question lined up. We're looking for yours too. So any questions around the MPA arrests or promised arrests, uh, we will have more topics uh, tonight that we can chat about. But let's start there, shall we? And any comments you've got, any questions you've got that you'd like read out or put on screen or put to Stefani or Rudy, pop them in the comment section down below this video. Uh, this morning, I woke up to the news that former Minister Zwane had been arrested in connection with the Estina dairy fraud. Let's get some details on that uh, with Rudy Haneke. Rudy, just bring us up to speed. Just give us a short uh, synopsis of what that case is all about, if you would. Yes, Tom, the arrest was for the, uh, his involvement in the Estino matter. Uh, I think everybody will remember that in 2018, the Estino matter was before the court. Uh, the uh, top uh, officials from the uh, uh, Free State government were uh, charged as well. And that case was withdrawn. I think, you know, they, they did some more investigations, got their act together, and uh, these uh, three uh, accused that we saw today in court is now, you know, on the Estino matter. And I do believe that the previous um, people that were arrested, like uh, Mr. Peter Tobete of uh, the uh, Free State Government, uh, as well as the CFO there, uh, Ms. Lamini, um, all of them will, I, I'm very sure, will be uh, in court on the next appearance. And if I'm not mistaken, it is on the 4th of November. 
So about a month from now, um, we will see the other accused in court as well. If you read the story in the news today and you've got a question or two for Rudy or Stefani, pop that question or comment in the comment section down below this video. Here's a question that I've got for Stefani. I was looking at the the amounts involved. And if I'm if I'm correct, Rudy, is it 2 million rand or so that, that this uh, Estina Dairy case covers? No, Tom, it's a bit more than that. Um, it was about uh, $2 million. Okay, uh, dollars, you know? right. So it is a bit more than... Uh, that is just the money that moved overseas and came back through a money laundering uh, scheme. But the whole contract was 280 million rand that was paid out to uh, to Estina. Now, Stefani, when these fraud charges get laid, do they get laid on the $2 million or the, the 200 million rand amount? Well, it, it doesn't really matter because it, you will you will either um, you know you will either prosecute them for two million dollars, but you will make it um, realistic. So a, a prosecutor will probably look at what's the exchange rate to sort of give a, an indication to the court the value. Although the amount is important because that shows the the, the sort of seriousness of, of that, the that's crime. That's what I, I wanted to ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say, is there a difference between two hundred million rand fraud and a 20 million rand fraud or 40 million rand fraud in this case, somewhere around there. Uh, if you, yeah, if you start talking about um, in, in, in terms of um, that amount of zeros, um, it's still when you sentence, um, um, you know, you are either guilty of fraud or you're not. Whether you, when you, whether you defrauded someone or you were corrupt for um, one rand or whether you were corrupt for, for, for 200,000 million or whatever the case may be, um, you're either guilty or you're not guilty. But when it comes to um, bail, so that is the process before the trial starts, and, and when it comes to sentence, I think you can appreciate the difference between someone stealing um, a chappy and, sure. and, and, and someone literally robbing the country of an enormous amount of money. Then, so, uh, be, Because it's the seriousness of the crime. Um, and... Uh, um, when it comes to sentencing, that surely is very, very, very important. Got it. Well, let's get to some of the questions from our viewers, shall we? And start with Claire Feldman, who says, Arrests are great, but when will the actual trials take place? I suspect years will lapse. How long does it take uh, between arrest and bail hearings, or being charged and then the bail hearing, and then the actual trials, Stefani? Well, sure. That's literally like asking how long is a piece of string. Um, but uh, let me try and I, I'm i going to guess that we are quite far advanced in, in, in the investigations. So um, uh, someone will appear, there's, there's the question of bail, bail will be granted, and then your, let's call it pre-trial um, stuff starts, um, uh, 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 an accused and or his legal represent, uh, representatives or, um, you know, they have a right to contents of the docket, mm. we will get the contents of the docket. And then, you know, you need to arrange a trial date. So then it's about when is everybody available? And then you start when, you know, and, and the state calls witnesses and all of that. So it can really, it can take anything from the accused putting his hand up saying, listen, I'm guilty. Uh, I want to plead guilty. I want to enter into plea and sentence agreement, or I'm pleading not guilty. Um, um, if you are talking about a case where there's still investigations outstanding, um, then a, a person will appear, the court will take into account the seriousness of the crime, whether you should get bail or not, and then uh, the, the, the case gets postponed in order for the police to continue and finalise their investigations. Um, so there's, there's, it really depends on the facts, but um, you know, a case can really take anything from, you know, a year, five years to 10 years. But I think in, in, in these instances, um, I think the state will try and will, will try and make sure that the, there's a fair trial and a speedy trial because an accused has got a right to a speedy trial. Although- Unless um, they don't accused, want one, yes. <laughs> unless they don't want one, unless they want to see how long they can drag yeah. this out. You must just remember, and, 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 and maybe this is worth discussing, and I would like to hear Rudy's opinion on it. Mm -hmm. We are now a few years down state capture. I mean, money only lasts, you know, this long. Um, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm hearing rumors that, you know, 
it's it, the, the living is not as good as it was because the the the, the taps were, were closed so you are also in a scenario where people may not have the cash and the money to just drag this process out so you know one can hope but i i, I think logic dictates that if you if, if you do not keep on filling the spot that at some point your your resources will run out mm. um and you know unfortunately um defending yourself in a criminal case is is not the cheapest thing not cheap at especially all, if you yeah. want to waste time yeah so i don't know let me, really, let, what is, well let's what ask rudy yeah Yes, Tony. I think that um, you know. First of all, we must keep in mind that these accused will, uh, you know, employ the best legal minds mm -hmm. in the country, and that is first of all, you know, a very costly process. Yeah. Uh, those guys don't come cheap. Uh, then uh, I'm not going to, you know, name uh, or mention any names here, but I was involved in an investigation where uh, one of the accused that's before court, before the court, in one of these cases. Um, ran through an amount of about 12 million rand in uh you know in, in two years two say three years so they were big spenders um and they didn't you know think that you know they're going to need this money for 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 court cases uh, i don't think that they even tried to say that you know they must put some money away for their uh, old day and for their pension days but so uh, I, I tend to agree with Stefani that, you know, living is not as nice as, as it was a few years ago. And I think also for um, the Guptas, uh, we must remember that the Guptas are arrested or two of the brothers are arrested in and they are in custody in uh, Dubai. And, you know, they will have to come back as well uh, at some stage uh, if we if we succeed with an extradition uh, uh, case. Um, then that's going to cost them as well because they will have to pay some uh, uh, legal fees on that side and then come here and do, do the same thing here. So, yes, I do uh, think that, uh, Stefani, you are, you are correct. If you say you know, the funds are drying up and that will obviously influence uh, the, the length of a trial. So, yeah. Can I, can I add to that? Sure. Really? Don't you think, um, you know, as well that... Um, although we're not there yet, but I think we, we uh, and this is where civil society and everybody out there, this is this is our chance to really try and affect change, is that there is, you know, a slight change in we're not going to tolerate corruption. So uh, just understand me, I'm not saying that all of a sudden corruption is stopped or mm. will be stopped, but, um, you know, the, 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 the political sort of... <clears throat> trying to um, uh, shelter you and, you know, we've got to make sure that there's no prosecutions or arrests or whatever, that is sort of also coming to an end. Um, so people are exposed to the danger of being arrested and being prosecuted. And, and you know, it is cold and alone out there as a corrupt person if, if, if you are no longer, you know, sharing the, the protection. Well, I see Wayne yes, Divinage. I think, uh, go ahead, Rudy. Sorry, I just want to add to that, Stefani. One thing that we uh, should be very glad about is the fact that they are not using um, these accused. They, they're not using taxpayers' money yes. to defend their cases. They are not employed uh, anymore. Uh, the ones that were employed uh, you know, by the state or SOEs. So they must use their own private money. And that is something that, you know, is fine for me because they're not going to use our tax money to pay there for their agree for their uh, legal cases agree i see wayne divinage has joined us hello wayne how are you this evening nice to be here um, in a good mood we're celebrating you know this is the first minister ex-minister and i think we're talking about zwan yeah i'm sorry i'm late i was just doing some interviews um this is good stuff this is the fight against corruption taking traction yes always very slow uh not fast enough but tom i think we've got to remind people that at the time when we were laying these charges against uh, zwani and other ministers people were saying you're wasting your time mm. never gonna happen and our methodology has always been you know who's in power today and our, our views are uh, is that people in power today are not necessarily in charge tomorrow and and that things cannot be laid, the cases cannot be laid five years later. Well, the strength of a case, when you've got the evidence and it's fresh and you've got whistleblowers, that's the stuff that we take 
and we do the work now because in time it pays off. This is what's happening. This this game of fighting corruption is a long-term game. You need resilience. You need experts like uh, Stefani and uh, Rudy and our project managers who stay the course, who have the intellectual uh, knowledge of these matters um, and, 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 and can, uh, you know, perpetuate them ongoingly. So we are in a good in good spirits today yeah, i wanted to ask you how did you feel when you read the headlines this morning it was lovely you know because because uh, it just reminds us of why we do our work um and uh and and why resilience and tenacity is is a very important uh, core value of ours uh you know the same thing with the dudunyeni matter it took us three four years sometimes we questioned are we doing this right are we spending millions of rand but then you look back and it was all worth it. And there are many of these. Um, but Zwane particularly, and we're waiting for Faith Matambi and uh, and um, uh, who's, who the others did, Lamini. Uh, there are many of them. Uh, they, 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 they really have to be held accountable and, 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 and face the consequences of their extremely corrupt and fraudulent uh, conduct in the past. So this is good for South Africa. I don't think many people realize and understand how important today's uh, prosecutions are. Uh, Wayne, what role has uh, Outer played in, in this uh, particular case? Well, I'm going to leave that to Stefani or sure. Rudy. I mean, when you just look at today's media statement that we put out, and well done to Louise and the team uh, and the comms team, you know, they really catch it well and put all the facts and the evidence from 2017 2018, 2019, you know, complaints to the Ethics Committee in Parliament. The fact that they didn't do much about it is not the issue. And I think also we can't claim that everything happens in this case or others because of Outer's work. This is all part of a collective. You know, when everything comes together, when the work of other organizations and the NPA and that and Outer's work comes together, this is what happens. There's not one, there's not a, a, you know, a silver bullet in one organization's work. It's a collective, but we're playing a very, very important role. And I just want to remind people that the NPA initially in 2018 bought this case uh, to court, but, but did the right thing by pulling it back because the people in court today are not the same people that were, were brought to court on the Sina matter then. And the NPA in 2018 was a very different NPA than it is today. So the question is, is this a stronger case than then? Absolutely. The NPA today will lay charges that are very strong, but the NPA at that stage, it was it had capacity issues. It was floundering a bit. So we're glad they pulled that uh, case back because Stefani will or you know, always reminds us, you can't charge, you can't try these matters twice. You have one shot at it. Uh, so this is good. Yeah, but let Stefani and uh, Rudy explain what the work that they've done over the last five sure. years on, on. Yeah, so let me go first. I think it, it, it started, I, I think let's just take this way back to, you know, the Gupta Leaks, the work that Rudy and his team put into going through the, the enormous amount of information that was um, captured in that, um, that data set. And um, and then flushing it out and identifying what are we talking about here and what are the charges and then laying the charges and you know I'm, uh, I'm also reminded we we sort of try to assist the the parliamentary committee on 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 um, that was how many years ago to try and do an investigation into what happened there at the at, in the in the department and that was um, stopped and because they didn't have money or something, you know, all the excuses um, um, and, and, and the ethics complaint that we laid. But I have to say, because I don't think Rudy will say it, you know, um, and Wayne, um, you can't, but maybe I can to say that I think we can, we do deserve some kudos. I think we are one of the organizations that sort of kept going. And then we had this um, um, I think this weapon, um, um, you know, Rudy Heineke, that mm. also assisted the NPA and the police in order to get their house in order so that we are where we are today. So um, we are privileged that we, we, we can assist and, you know, 
push the people in the right direction to make the right decisions. And then ultimately we see um, someone like Sabizi Zwani um, prosecuted. I think it sends a message. I, uh, um, you know, while you were talking, Wayne, I also think that this is an important sort of, um, um, uh, we are in an in, in a, in a important time of the prosecutions and state capture that we are seeing these, um, you know, sort of more politically exposed um, mm. individuals. Um, and, and it sends a message that that we now have the chutzpah to go after the people that was actually sort of responsible and should have protected us against yeah. um, the corruption, but was instead part of it. Yeah, Rudy, Rudy would you like to add to that? Yeah, Tom, if I may, uh, hmm. I take us back on a journey. You know, uh, let's say the state capture journey and the Gupta League journey. I can. I remember it like yesterday when um, uh, I got a call from our former colleague, Ben Tron, uh, who, you know, came to my house and he said, you know, that was that was on the Monday night after the story broke uh, early in June in 2017 in the Sunday Times. He said to me, Rudy, we've got the Gupta leaks. What now? We must start looking at it. And, you know, it started off uh, that night. Um, and we, here we are six years down the line. Uh, seeing some action now, uh, and I think Alta has done, um, you know, a lot of work in this space. Uh, we started off with the uh, No Room to Hide report, um, where we wrote seven chapters or six chapters rather uh, on different issues, um, all from the Gupta leaks. After that, I can remember, you know, we had tasks everybody to uh, uh, prepare affidavits in the names of Ben or uh, Stefani to lay criminal charges. Uh, we laid, what was it, Stefani, I think 16 uh, criminal charges. Uh, Indeed. These, uh, these, these, the names that were, uh, you know, household state capture names by now. Uh, Brian Mulefi, Marcella Koko, Mosa Ben Zizwane. Um, ben uh, <laughs> Yes, all of them, Wayne. And, you know, it was, in those days, uh, you know, if you think back, uh, the, the head of the Gauteng, uh, uh, the head of the Hawks in Gauteng, General Mokateri, Prince Mokateri, visited us in the in the office and said, "Yes, mm. thank you. good work." And he had some uh, uh, officials with him, you know, some senior officers, and we just never heard from them. Uh, and mm. it, you know, went dead. And we followed up month by month. And later on, a brigadier of the Hawks, you know, came to our office and visited us and said, "Listen, guys, we are investigating this, but nothing, still nothing happened." Mm. And Obviously, the uh, uh, the State Capture Commission started, and we changed our uh, uh, our approach and said, "Listen, we're going to um, file these uh, referrals straight at the ID in terms of the NPA Act." And then, slowly but surely, you know, there was movement. We got involved, uh, very involved, and worked together and assisted there. Uh, but it was always also the time when new management came in at the SIE, at the uh, NPA. Uh, so it was kind of easier to, you know, to, 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 to get an ear to hear. And uh, so here we are today. And I've, I've just, you know, before, the, before we started off, I thought, let me just see exactly how many cases are there. And, you know, uh, Advocate Batoy talked about nine seminal cases that they will be uh, that they will have before court before the end of September, and I count seven now. Um, so uh, we 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 must look forward. To, you know, there's only a few days left. Another two, another maybe. Two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's get to some of the. Qu <laughs> yeah, you want to? You got another point, Rudy? Yes. Yes. I just want to 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 you know ask or, or, or you know mention. Um, we must not forget the seven cases before the court is, I think, roughly about 40, 50 accused. That's before the court now. It's big cases, the Transnet case, the, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the former DG, uh, Joel Rapella, that was uh, arrested on the rehab fund case that we were very involved with, uh, Stefani. Um, the Free State oh. case, uh, Iqbal Sharma, you know, where the Guptas are also uh, charged. And that, that led to their uh, arrests. Um, we think about the asbestos case in the Free State with Ace Mahashule and Edmund Saudi and the Bosasa matters, Vincent Smith and Agrisi and uh, Linda Antti, the, the former Commissioner of, of Correctional Services, 
And then today there is Tina case. And we must not forget, uh, maybe a very small case, but there was also two employees of ABB that were arrested uh, for their mm. part uh, that they played at Kusili uh, with the ESCOM. And that's the one thing that we're still missing, the big ESCOM cases. Mm. We don't so big look, ESCOM cases. That's those are the ones we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, this, those are the ones that's still outstanding in my view, uh, Tom. Uh, okay. You know, we, we, we know about Bashela Koko. Anosh Singh and Brian Mulef is before the court on transnet matters. Uh, but there are, they were a lot of state capture uh, uh, that, that, was, that took place at, at, uh, at sure. ESCOM. So that's the ones we were looking for. And then lastly, um, I think, you know, the politician today or the former politician, uh, that's a good move because, you know, they were involved. But they're like Wayne mentioned, you know, there's a lot of other politicians. Yeah. He got Mutambi, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we hope that they will, you know, appear at some stage and will, charge, and will be charged as well. Well, we're now seeing former ministers standing in the dock. Uh, let's get some of the comments and questions that are coming in. Plenty coming in. Paul Rathbone says, love it. All the Zoomers, Aces and Zwanes threatening to spill all the beans in court. Hopefully it's this century. What do you make of uh, those kind of threats, Stefani, when it comes to cases like this? And somebody who's accused says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spill the beans. Does that have any bearing in a, in a legal case or is that a political threat? Oh, uh, okay. Let's, you know, it's probably more a, a veiled threat and, and, and you know, um, maybe spill the beans. You should be worried because I will implicate you by all means. But when it comes to a criminal case, when you are before court, unfortunately, you are the responsible person. So if you want to spill the beans, you know, my feeling is take responsibility for what you did. Plea, plea guilty. Maybe the state can uh, will uh, will will sort of enter into a plea and sentence agreement, and let us get you to jail, and then we will use you in order to go after the next. Well, is that a so possibility? That is there a possibility yeah. that some of these big names could turn state's witness? Um, oh, depends on who you ask. I'm not a big fan, and this is really just a personal view. I'm not a big fan of using one criminal give him um, um, indemnity, and then go after another um, um, criminal. Uh, I believe that if you are sincere in the fact that you are guilty, uh, and, and, and part of the sentence process is to, to, to really, you know, to say, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and really believe that, that uh, what you did was wrong. That's, that's, that's part of the, um, uh, you know, process that you need to go through. If you are, if, if you are guilty, um, and you ad ad admit to being guilty, I believe, let's do a plea and sentence agreement. So, yes, you're not wasting the court's time, although, you know, there's different opinions on that, but you're not wasting the time. You, 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 you're going to plead guilty. We can sentence you. And then rather after your plea and sentence agreement, we can use you as a witness against someone else. Now, there's always complications because you must understand the first thing that a defense lawyer will, uh, will ask and say is, You've entered into a plea and sentence agreement. So mm. what is in it for you? Yeah. Um, I would rather do that and, and, and try and find um, some corroborating evidence. Because if you also have only the, a single witness, it, it, it's for various reasons, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult. So that is what an accused also needs to take into account, is that, you know, him, you know, a person saying that certain people are, um, are also guilty, but there's no corroborating evidence, uh, the state is going to struggle. And, and you, as a, as a single witness, is going to struggle. But it is a possibility. Let's get through some of the questions, uh, as many as we can. Di, Di Gibson, I guess this is directed at Stefani. Di would like to know in which court will this be heard? advocate dimensions under 400,000 rand over 400,000 rand some of the cases will um, be heard in the specialized commercial crime court some of it will um, probably be heard in in in, in the high court I, I I think that um, the way the high court is set up just lends itself to bigger cases 
um, and because you, um, you know, in the high court, they've got a, a, a rolling role. So you set a matter down for a, a, a certain period of time and you need to finish normally, try and finish in that um, um, set of time. Um, a high court is not a court of first instance. So all the accused will appear in lower courts first and then it will be decided where it, where it goes. Normally the decision is, um, you know, a district court doesn't have jurisdiction to, to where you can prosecute certain crimes, but let's put that to the side, is that your decision is, is normally regarding sentence. So who can give um, the sentence this person deserves? So there's not a lot of difference between the regional court and, 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 and a high court, but a high court can give, um, you know, life and, 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 and all of that. Mm. And then your, the experience of your prosecutors. Um, um, there's some regional court prosecutors when I was still prosecuting that I would trust more than any advocate in the high court because that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, if you are in the high court, you're better. But um, sometimes it is taken into account that your more experienced people are sitting in, in, in the high court and that it will probably go to, to the high court. Right, Claire Feldman would like to know about former Minister uh, Lynn Brown and her activities at Eskom. Uh, Wayne, uh, do you believe that uh, Lynn Brown have, has anything to answer to? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And again, I'll ask Rudy to come in. Yeah, he's our, our guru on this. He's been following Lynn Brown and her activities. I must say she is one that did try and keep a clean slate, you know, hid as much of the evidence as possible, used proxies. Uh, uh, Rudy, you fill us in, but you, if there's one minister who tried to keep a, house, a corrupt house clean, uh, it was Lynn uh, Brown. But uh, Rudy, you, you you give more substance to that. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Uh, Lynn Brown is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a strange kind of case, but that her hands are very dirty is, uh, there's no questions about it. You know, she was exposed at the Zondo Commission. Um, you know, the, the, the Chief Justice just took her apart in when, when she was questioned, especially on, you know, her appointment of the ESCOM and the Denel boards, where she was uh, sent names by Salim Essa and uh, through her uh, uh, personal assistant, Ms. Kim, uh, Kim David, but um, I don't think that she will be able to walk away. If uh, the, the, I think the other question is, do the um, uh, NPA, are they looking into it or the investigating directorate? Um, that is an interesting question. I don't know if it's on their radar. Um, last time that I, uh, you know, had interactions with them, uh, I cannot say that that is on the radar. Things can change. I don't know. But um, surely, you know, she was one of the big architects of of state capture especially when she was the minister of public enterprise and especially at the nell and and escom mm. keith sorensen says uh, embezzling millions bail granted at ten thousand rand by sympathetic officers of the law explain please how, how does bail uh, bail how do bail amounts get set stefani Sure, that is always that again, that is within the, uh, you know, court will listen objectively to um, all the facts and, 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 and the court will decide. If you're talking about Schedule 5 and Schedule 6 offences, Schedule 6 offences is your really serious offences where the, the Act basically says that you need to convince a court and there needs to be exceptional circumstances why you should be released on bail. And then your schedule five is more, um, you know, you you can con convince the court to to let you out on bail. And then your lesser offences is it's basically you can get bail um, unless the state can say why you shouldn't. But at the end, after saying all of that, bail is about whether you will come back to court. So will you stand trial? So are you a flight risk? Do you have a passport? Do you have fixed assets in, in South Africa? Um, you know, you have a family in South Africa, you have a family in the area. Um, it, it, it is always a difficult investigation because you, you can't see into the future, but you use the, the, the circumstances to, to try and establish whether this person will run away. Will the person interfere with um, investigations, with witnesses? So if you have 
um, you know, a, a, a serious crime where there's also evidence that a person will interfere with the witnesses, will terrorize the witnesses, um, you, you will also keep them in jail. I mean, we've um, opposed bail previously where we, you know, in, um, when I was still prosecuting where if the accused um, will, you know, if he gets bail, he will be killed because his life is in danger. So mm. there's a lot of factors that you need to 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 um, um, uh, keep in mind. What is interesting is just also remember that you know if you hear these bail amounts, it's a, if you decide that someone is not a flight risk, he's not a risk, he's not a security risk, whatever the case may be, the bail amount should be affordable. So it doesn't help giving a person that doesn't ha that's unemployed, um, you know maybe. It, the, the person committed a less serious offence and you want to give him bail but give him a million rand. I wanted to ask then, you, I, I just ex extend yeah. uh, Keith's question because you watch these American court cases and you, and you see bail amounts of a you know, million dollars, ten million dollars. Uh, are, are our bail amounts too low in this country? It should be, um, it, it should be affordable so if you if you give someone um, um like i said if you decided that someone is not a flight because you can get bail the amount set should should sort of so it shouldn't be it, punitive in any way well, uh, sorry it shouldn't be punitive it's not there it, to be not punitive a, it's not a sentence bail is not a sentence but you, you will also appreciate the fact that if if you have a millionaire that has defrauded, you know, people of their pension funds, it doesn't help giving him five thousand rand mm. because he can afford to not come back to court and 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 and, and forfeit the bail money. For that person, you'll give more, you'll give a higher amount. But the unemployed person that is not a flight risk, you'll get five thousand or two thousand, or you may even consider a warning with with some bail conditions because you can also set bail conditions I've, you can also tell an accused that he needs to go and report to the police station once a week every day between 10 and and, and and 2 in the afternoon whatever the case may be not that i find that that's very useful because uh, you know you've got clients previously that go to the police station and they do not know who you are but in principle that mm. is the type of things that you you can do but i find this about, quite fascinating because it, let's say I have embezzled uh, and I'm involved in state capture and I've taken a hundred million bucks. That hundred million is a hundred million that I don't really want to show anybody. I'm going to do my best to hide it. So when I, when I get charged, I mean, I'm not going to show a magistrate or a judge, look, I got a hundred million sitting in the bank account. I'm going to plead poverty. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and the accused may be sitting on piles of cash or burned through it at 12 million rand a year, as Rudy was uh, explaining earlier. But uh, when you look at their bank statements, there may not be much money there at all. Oh, that is, you know, that is the, 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 the purpose of sort of a bail, let's call it investigation. Um, and the court is in a very precarious position in the sense that looking into the future, what is going to happen. But you, you, you've you hit the nail on the head is that this is not punitive. It's not the mm. sentence. Got it. So you will yeah. not because you took 12 million, your bail needs to be 12. The punishment that doesn't is, start not, at uh, the bail hearing. Yes, Wayne. You know, remember, Tom, his charges of that is his role that was played in the Guptas earning the money. I yeah. don't think there's, maybe there is there, there's going to come out, so what did he get out of it? But this is about uh, his his role. The Guptas got the money yeah. out. Sure okay. Um, Christo Fenter says, Ach, the accused will call in sick. Lessons learned. And I think he's referring to former President Zuma and the, uh, well, Billy Downer today saying that his private prosecutions are nothing more than Stalingrad tactics. What do you make of that, Wayne? I mean, yeah, look, Tom, there's no doubt that, I mean, even uh, Zwane today telling the journalists outside court, Jay, yeah, look. You know, he's glad now he's looking forward to all these rumors and his day in court he's going to approve. Well, we've heard that before. And then they do everything they can to stay out of court. So they will learn from their master, Mr. Zuma. Um, the money will come from the Guptas owe these people, especially Zwane, a lot of money. He helped them get a lot out. And, uh, and there will be no shortage of funds to hire the top lawyers and do everything they can to filibuster, slow down, bring interlocutory challenges. That's that's a given. Let's accept that. Doesn't mm. doesn't matter if it's drawn out for a year or two. 
that will get there eventually. He's the one who has to go to court every month, every second month. He's the one that is going to, you know, uh, be headlines every time he is in court. Uh, his life is a misery. I wouldn't want to be no. a Zwane to no, once you've been charged, there's there's not much. Uh, once you've been charged and so publicly uh, and such a high profile yeah, case, you're yeah, not going to be sitting pain, making deals tomorrow. Mm. Exactly, and the pain goes a lot further. You know, all your friends are no longer your friends. Your wife, your children, they feel his pain mm. as well. They go mm. to school. They they. Uh, the wife goes to book club or meets with her friends and says, sorry, we don't want you around anymore. And these are real things that happen. The pain goes to every family member. Yeah. He is, you know, his conduct goes far beyond him. They don't think about this. No, and I've heard of uh, a state capture accused walking through supermarkets and people heckling them, actually having a go at them in the supermarket and, you know, telling no, them they're no. disgusting human beings. And so, yeah, no, not too many idea. places to hide. Yeah. Paul Rathbone says, Zwane has now been charged, therefore the ANC step-aside clause should come into effect too. Shouldn't it relieve him of his post of portfolio chair in Parliament? It should, yeah. That should have happened even way before he was charged. <coughs> but it should, be, yeah. it should be interesting to see what they're going to do now. Uh, it, it really sh is going haven't to be... They, haven't they indicated he is being removed from that role? I read something today, maybe, Rudy, I don't know if you saw it. No, and I didn't see anything. But uh, you know, I uh, in our statement we also said that we call for his removal or that he must resign. Mm. Uh, that's the I, I don't know how much integrity these state capture looters have, but if he has got an, any integrity, he should uh, resign. You know, and vacate that position. Well, he doesn't have integrity. That's for sure. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, I, think, I think I hear that Mackenzie wants to run for for he's nominated by Kozil. I mean, really. Mm. What do they call it? As thick as thieves, you know. Uh, just keep uh, hover around each other. All the thieves will put the thieves forward for nomination. I mean, keep it up, uh, Peter Meritzberg, uh, the the most rotten municipality in the country. You want to and KZN, you want to uh, elect uh, as William Kizer as your nominated president. Go ahead. I mean, my goodness. Perhaps yeah, we can talk about great. municipalities and local governments at the tail end of the show with this local government summit taking place. I'd love your comments on that in just a moment. But let's try and clear up a couple of these questions. Bongani Mbanja says, I think the NPA and ID approach of using the contravention of PFMA charges will see a lot of people speedily getting behind bars. Just explain that to us, Stefan. <laughs> um, um, just just say that again. What is, what is the question? Bongani says, I think the NPA and the ID approach in using the contravention of PFMA charge will see a lot of people speedily getting behind bars. Um, I agree that there are some, you know, you can always, you, you get your, your bigger common law offences and then you get your statutory offences and you get your lesser offences. And I'm sure just to, to maybe answer the question in general is that you may use some lesser offences, um, um, although still very serious, in order to rather get a conviction than to be busy for the next 20 years trying to convict someone of, for example, treason or mm. whatever the case may be. So if the question is, you know, why can't we prosecute for people for treason? I still believe that you can, but will you? Because you need to take into account um, you know, uh, how long is it going to take you? Can you really prove it? And 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 and, and that Got that it. type of thing. You know, prosecutions is 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 not supposed to prove a point. It is about you are playing with people's lives. And yeah. I'm there. I'm talking not just the accused. You are also it's it's in the public interest. So there's a lot of things that one needs to to play up. One uh, the PFMA contraventions are not necessarily the easiest because it's statutory offences. I. I love I love prosecuting statutory offences, but the elements are sometimes a bit more than just your common common law offences. But yeah, it's an interesting point, and I and I take it. Yeah. Di Gibson wants to know if the Guptas are still being detained. Anybody got news uh, on the Guptas? What's happening there with extradition? I don't know if you heard anything, Rudy. As far as I know, they still yeah. they are still being kept in custody. Yeah, the last that I heard, and uh, I can vouch for, you know, a very good source, is that they are still in custody. 
apparently they have applied, I think, more than once for bail, but it was denied. Denied. Um, and uh, I, do, I just want to see the extradition case, you know, get, uh, to get before the court in, 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 uh, in the UAE. So that that thing can take off and that we know where we can stand mm -hmm. with that. But I will also take some time. Um, Stefani and, and Tommy, if I just may add um, and, and, and mention this, we must not forget we are all very happy about the people that were criminally charged but we should not forget about the preservation orders that was granted to the AFU uh, of billions of rands. You know, the whole uh, uh, optimum mine, the, the assets of Iqbal Sharma, the assets of regiments, the money in the bank and so on, freezing orders that were obtained by the AFU. And that is, you know, the other side of the coin uh, in state capture here is that we must try and recover as much as we can. Uh, and here comes in, you know, the big the big tickets like uh, the McKinsey's of, of, of who were involved in state capture, you know, very fast to pay back uh, a billion rand to, to uh, um, ESCOM ads, uh, almost a billion rand to Transnet and so on. Um, but there, you know, as well, we, we need to uh, get behind the NPA and maybe pressurize them and, you know, uh, ask them, aren't they going to go after the the directors and uh, of those companies who made those bad decisions mm. involved. Good point. It's not always just about the the culprits that we for court now, but the big corporate companies are we're all very involved and they should also be held accountable. Couldn't agree with you more. Eleanor Gray says Nomvula Mokanyani of Let the Rand Fall will pick it up again, Fame. Would really like to see her name being announced soon. Uh, Janet Longman or Janet Longman says you definitely deserve kudos. Thank you. Craig Ken said it's the likes of me who thanks you, Outer. It's awesome to be able to have faith in an organization that makes a positive difference for the right reasons. Thank you all. And then Claire Feldman wants to know about the corruption at uh, NSFAS and the lottery and if there are any developments uh, when it comes to uh, fraud and corruption charges on those two issues. Rudy? Now, Tom, I can speak about the NS Fast matter. Um, we will make it public later on, you know, in a, in a, in a good statement, uh, media statement. But yes, we did submit a, a prior request to uh, request documents and information on, on two specific tenders that we are very suspicious about. Uh, we haven't received any answer yet. It's only a few days, but... Um, you know, with the minister making uh, the announcement yesterday that from today the applications for funding is open for, for, for 2023, um, it seems that uh, I've been on the NSFAS uh, uh, website today a few times, but it seems like it's not open. You know, you cannot you cannot get to the page where you, you, you make an application for funding for next year. So I don't think that everything is, is quite honky-dory and, you know, smooth running there. Uh, but yeah, that uh, NS Fast matter will definitely, um, you know, be thoroughly investigated, and we will take that matter further. On the NLC, Stefani can uh, maybe on the uh, NLC. The NLC, <laughs> just quickly. Um, um, I know that Andy um, was before uh, Motibe was before um, a parliamentary committee, if I'm not mistaken. The SIU has uncovered a, a lot of corruption. So, he, again, I think he actually, in fact, thanked civil activist organizations, journalists that, you know, kept that in, in, in the news. There's, there's millions and millions of rands. Uh, you're talking about millions and millions of rands. They are considering asset forfeiture, some of the uh, uh, specifically houses that they, they're going to go after. And then I was in, 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 in the room with Willy Hofmeyer and he's saying that they are very busy. That's the board of NLC. So hopefully there will be some movement. Mm. Um, you know, we've been talking about prosecutions and don't get me wrong. I think um, prosecutions are necessary. We need to see accountability. We need to see people in orange overalls. But together with that, we also need the asset forfeitures. But we also need, you know, a case is not going to take as long if someone is out in the cold. And I, I think what, what was also missing, and the, some of the reason why there was no prosecutions, is the fact that, you know, 
firstly, um, um, you know, you hide behind um, a, a political party or whatever the case may be, or the unwillingness to, to go after uh, criminals. But, you know, people are kept in positions. We need ethical leadership and that it should be frowned upon that people that is um, exposed in this way keep a uh, you know chairperson of a committee and if you if, if if you create that perfect storm being out in the cold it's not that easy to then just drag out and drag out mm. a, a, a criminal case so what we need is a coordinated um you know sort of accountability campaign and, and and may i just end off by saying and this is where civil society and our supporters can play a big part it sometimes looks like it's a an enormous mountain to climb but um you know each and every day saying no to corruption making sure that people do not get away with it it will create an environment where it it is not acceptable we're not talking about corruption you know as an acceptable norm it is unacceptable and that will create different behavior devon charles mm -hmm. says how do we find the balance between turning smaller fish state witness in order to land the bigger fish i think we touched on that a little bit earlier on uh, stefani did speak about that claire feldman says limits on appeals would hasten each case neil de villiers wants to know why we'd want the guptas here why would yeah, uh, neil says why would we or they them. want the guptas here well, we want them here because they stole a lot of money from you and i we want them to answer to their transactions and, and conduct in court and, and hopefully be found guilty and go and spend some time in jail and maybe we can fetch as much money as we can. I mean, it's that straightforward. I know it might sound simple, but why not is the reciprocal answer to that. Why why, why not? Yeah, but why? Um, we need talked about the Lingwin director and why we went off to do do I think yes. it's sort of the same answer is mm. we want them here so that they can be held accountable so that they do not do this to any other country ever mm. again yeah I think there are a lot of people that I, would I, I, yes go ahead Rudy sorry I just want to add to that um we must never forget that the Guptas were involved in state uh, uh contracts to the tune of 57 billion rand they have pocketed, you know, in their companies, uh, 16 billion rand. That's money that was stolen from you and me and everybody on the screen and everybody listening and everybody out there from the guy that just paying that and not paying, uh, you know, income tax. Everybody was affected by the, the, the actions of the Guptas. And that is why we want them here. And that is why we should be held accountable. In the remaining minutes that we've got, perhaps we can touch on one or two other stories in the news, Wayne. One is this local government summit that's been going on for a few days. I think the president spoke there today. What's your, what's your uh, understanding of what's <laughs> happening at the local government summit? Is it, is, it, is it all waffle or is there something that's going to yeah. come out of it? Yeah, I think, I think what we want to do is ex expand on this a, a bit maybe next week, Tom. But sure. in short, it's a talk shop. It's a waste of time. It's lip service. It's in Kosozana, Lemini, Zuma. Uh, I've read the, her speech and, and everything. Now, here's the simple nub of it all. I mean, we get invited to this, this conference uh, five days before it starts. Civil society is on the local government uh, anti-corruption forum. And we get invited as an afterthought. And, and you know, we need to give input, rather, presentations there. So, yeah. so, so this is our message to the Minister of COGTA and the Minister of Treasury and DG. For as long as you do not hold your people and yourself to account for the Auditor General's reports, for as long as the people that are sitting in these municipalities with COGTA's oversight, the MECs of COGTA and finance in these various provinces know who these uh, accounting officers are, but they keep their jobs, their, their audits go south every year, the, the maladministration, the misspending, the, uh, the, 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 the serious uh, irrational uh, uh, and, and, and uh, the conduct that, that is taking place. For as long as those people just stay, you are a miss. You are not holding them to account. You are the problem. Uh, so you can have as many talk shops as you want about the beautiful things that have done and, and how much has changed. The reality is it's not changing for the better for the last 15 years for people who live in towns, especially rural mm. towns and even in big ones like Joburg. So so we have a bunch of ministers and a bunch of people, cadres who have been deployed, that don't know how 
to hold to people account. They do not know how to fire. And it's simple, man. You put in place the uh, the scorecard. And if you have a qualified audit, Mr. Accounting Manager, uh, CFO of this municipality next year, you're fired. It's that easy. Yeah. It's not difficult. I mean, you have those types of uh, conducted business. You fired. It's not difficult at all. But they don't do that. They don't know how to because it's hard to fire your mate. Let me ask you this, Wayne. Should the Eskom board be fired? There's been a lot of talk on Twitter and social media about the composition of the Eskom board. And when you take a look, you see all these professors and doctors, but very few with any experience in managing energy companies. Uh, just a comment on the, the composition of, of the board yeah, and the rumors I mean, that think- Pravin Gordhan will, will be uh, reconstituting that board. I think the board is, is is lacking a lot in some of the expertise it requires. Uh, maybe some of the executives as well. Maybe they've had enough time and they have to fall on their sword. We don't know. We don't necessarily believe, however, that taking everybody out and putting a new bunch in is going to change things. Mm. They're trying to fix a mess that is 10 years old and it's not going to happen overnight. But maybe they have to answer to some of the things and maybe it is time for change or maybe it is time to spruce it up and beef it up. Who knows? But uh, but the knee-jerk reaction, which we've seen, you know, Eskom has had, uh, I think, 11 CEOs in 12 years. Yeah. You cannot run a complex organization like that with management changes to that extent. And while you were doing all of that for a number of years, you put a fraught bunch of people in there who, who just really messed it up. And now we sit with a mess. What should be obvious is every time you don't have electricity, that should be a blatant uh, example of what corruption and maladministration means in practicality and in your life as a or South pet- African. Petrol in your car. Yes. Or watch the Rand dollar exchange rate. We could keep going all night with this, couldn't we? Uh, Wayne, uh, I think in the minute or so we've got left, would you like to address uh, the supporters who are watching the show tonight and going to be watching yes, post live? Uh- yeah, again, uh, thanks v- very much for, for joining us. I mean, we enjoy sharing what, we, what we're what we doing when we enjoy the fact that people are watching this and thousands will watch it uh, after the fact. Um, you know, it's, uh, again, this is a journey, and it's a journey that is made possible by our supporters and people who follow us, and uh, and we really respect that and, 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 and appreciate all the input that we get and the following and the comments, and, and we try and get, engage as much as we can. And we just need more of you. We need more support out there because we need another uh, 10 Rudys and another uh, 20 Stefanis and, and all the team players that we got. We need to grow this organization because the hardest thing, Tom, the hardest thing is the stuff we have to turn away, real big issues of corruption because we just – can't get to capacity uh, yeah. so much and we're only 45 staff uh, funded by the people so get your friends and families please if they're not contributing uh, and again never say well what's what difference will my 100 rand make to Arta because uh, 100 rand a month because if everybody said that we'd have nothing uh, well, it is all of those collectively that makes it up thanks very much for everything our supporters do for us and to this amazing Arta team you guys are incredible. You've done some good stuff today. Well, done. well the evidence uh, is there. The work that Outer does and how Outer has assisted the NPA and worked against corruption and maladministration you're starting to see the fruits of it now uh, as you open up your phone it used to be the newspaper but as you open up your phone in the morning and go onto news 24 or enca or sabc or wherever you get your news from you're starting to see that wonderful word if you're a uh, anti-corruption in south africa arrests 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 and uh, next convicted 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 we all dumbs well thank you to the team on air tonight rudy haneke portfolio manager in charge of state capture it's uh, uh outer thank you rudy Good to have you with us. Advocate Stefani Feck, everybody's favorite advocate, has joined us tonight. And the CEO of Alta, Wayne Duvenage, has been on your screen and inside the comments section. Uh, and just like to say thank you to Samantha van Nispen, taking care of you in the YouTube channel, and Masekho Mutsuneng, taking care of you in the Facebook channel. Thank you very much. I see lots of thank yous coming up on the screen. Uh, we'd put them up on, on screen if we had the chance, but we're looking at them right now. And thank you. Uh, and thank you to you for pressing the play button on the show tonight. You're either watching it live with us, or we bid you a, a good night as we leave you, or you're watching it post live and say hello to you as uh, you watch the Outer Hour in South Africa and all parts of the world, wherever you join us from. Thank you for making the effort. And remember to go along to outer.co.za if you've never visited the website before. Shame on you! Go to outer.co.za and take a look at the projects that Outer fights and deals with on your behalf. And 
And uh, look for that join now button. If you've never pressed it before, give it a drick. Uh, give it a, a drick like Noppy. Press that button. It's the red one. And as Wayne says, you, you will never know how much your donation, your 100 bucks a month or whatever it, uh, it might be, means in the fight against corruption. It really does count. So... That's where we leave it tonight, to say goodnight to you, wherever you find yourself. Hopefully you're in fine company, in fine form, got a bit of money in your pocket and a roof over your head and some food in your stomach. Uh, and make a date with us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. when we join you again for another Outer Hour. We talk to the team at Outer and find out what's next in the fight against corruption administration in South Africa. I'm Tom London. I wish you lots of love over the next seven days. And until then, I miss you already. Our fight to eradicate corruption, maladministration, unethical leaders, and the abuse of taxpayers' money by those in power continues. It's fresh, it's fearless, and focused. The Outer Hour, where your 